Um, I'm talking about the metaphysics behind love and hate, and I'm talking about possession. I'm talking about inheritance, uh, ancestral inheritance, and the passing down of generational knowledge, and how it's passed down. Um, through subconscious initiations, like why you see certain bloodlines have certain abilities, certain, um, they have a certain way about them that they couldn't have learned from, like, participating in mainstream society. Um, why you see some people suddenly change like what's going on energetically so hate is a binding force when you hate someone this this is honestly an evolutionary survival strategy like most species or it's like wired into your hindbrain you hate things that are threatening to you obviously because if something seems stronger scarier um like it could kill you your natural response would be to hate it because it's threatening your life it's threatening your you being in homeostasis which everyone is always trying to reach a state of equilibrium and homeostasis. So, you will automatically hate things that seem like they're threatening your survival, to put it briefly. But metaphysically, hate is a binding force. It's like it draws you to whatever you hate like a magnet. And this is kind of disturbing, especially if you're like, you hate things that you're disgusted by. I feel like when you see someone who, like, comes across as disgusting or, like, repulsive, it's not because it's actually them. It's because they, internally, they hate disgusting things. They hate disgust. So, they automatically, that kind of energy just binds itself to them. And a lot of this happens so quickly, especially depending on the magnitude of hatred that you're in. If you hate something really bad... It binds itself to you um, very fast before you even know what's going on. And the next thing you know, like, your moods are all over the place. You're doing shit you don't normally want to do. You have all kinds of, like, strange desires that you hate that go against your survival. Like, I feel like this is why people even get into shit like drugs or, like, dangerous activities that no one in their right mind would even want to do but it's because they're possessed by something or someone that they hate um and so when and then you think about love which seems to be the opposite of hate but it's actually very closely related they say the opposite of hate is indifference which is true like technically everything exists all at once But it depends on what you're paying attention to. Whatever you pay attention to, it's like it magnifies. It becomes like all-consuming. It's like that becomes your version of reality. So indifference just kind of like it puts everything in the periphery. It makes it as small as it really is. Um, You don't pay attention to it. Therefore, it doesn't really... It can't be a huge part of your life um but talking about love love metaphysically is a force that dissolves um it's when you love something it's always going to feel out of reach it's always going to feel like it can't connect to you and i've heard a lot of different people i was in a really fucked up uh space spiritually and emotionally like all winter because I was going through I was facing a lot of things that really made me think about hate and love and all this stuff and I was listening to people um, on YouTube who talk about this kind of stuff they all basically say the same thing if you want to be free of something 
if you want to get out of a cycle that you're in, if you want to avoid karma that's about to hit you like a fucking freight train, you have to find a way to love whatever it is that you used to hate, whatever it was that was like controlling your life. Um, and a lot of times this is very hard to do because it feels like whatever you hate is about to like totally impose on you and take you over. This is why I started getting cord cuttings again. Uh, they do these online. Um, spiritual practitioners like cut energetic cords between you and the other person. And then it makes this like transmuting hate into love a whole lot easier. If you want to leave somebody behind, like if, if you have it, <laughs> like you have to find a way to love it. You have to find a way to um, start appreciating it. That's a big thing as well because a lot of hate, when we think that we hate someone, honestly what it is, it's inspiration. They actually inspire us in some way. Um, but people hate admitting it. Like people hate giving people that kind of like credit so that we, so we just convince ourselves that we hate something and we want it, we want to destroy it and get rid of it. So if we can start honoring um, how the things that we hate actually inspire us and we can then link that inspiration into appreciation and appreciating them and loving them and seeing that like they're not all that bad, what we're really doing underneath all this, the whole, the whole point of this process is that we're letting them go. Um... And I was thinking the other day, I was observing people spiritually. I honestly think that people are just attracted to separation. Like there people romanticize um separation and distance and um like this whole concept of like yin and yang and like opposites attract and stuff or like it's all built around the concept of separation that you're not conjoined with it. I'm starting to think of how a few people that I know who are into this whole like unity uh, consciousness thing where they think that like we are all one, we're all just one big huge entity walking around in separate forms. These people are the people who at baseline they hate everyone the most. So of course they're gonna like, they're trying to transmute their hatred of humanity by being into unity consciousness and like There's all kinds of different forms of spirituality. I guess it's really all, it's all depends on whatever someone needs to believe in order to transmute hatred and get out of possession. Um, So I'm talking now about ancestral inheritance, inheritance of spiritual abilities, uh, generational knowledge, just intuitive knowing, knowing things about your bloodline, where you come from. And people who hate their family the most, people who have been scapegoated by their family the most, like they usually choose a few kids early on to scapegoat and treat like shit and abuse them. And these people, at first, they become people who hate their family. They hate their parents. They don't understand. uh, They don't understand them. And when you're anticipating attack from somebody, like say your, your parent abused you, you start anticipating attack. You start fearing the unknown. Uh, you never, you always, you develop this like intuitive radar where um, your, your hatred for your family energetically it starts binding you to them it starts putting you into sync with them so if you're scared of like unexpected someone unexpectedly unexpectedly like yelling at you you're scared of somebody calling you something terrible all of a sudden that just fucks up your whole day we it's like we develop this defense mechanism of hating everyone in the family hating ancestors, hating your bloodline, people who are in bloodlines who um, are 
like marginalized um you you hate the bloodline and the the person in the family who hates them the most is kind of the one who becomes like the most enlightened about where they've come from i feel like these kind of people are the ones who are most into like ancestry and lineage they subconsciously initiate people who are in bloodlines that are spiritually gifted um through encouraging them to hate their family because what this does it's like it creates a link uh to where ancestral knowledge and paths of initiation into developing like certain gifts and abilities that are passed down in bloodlines that that's how the process takes place like if you had an ancestor who was like very powerful you had some kind of spiritual ability in your bloodline that was mastered by somebody a while ago and then somehow throughout the generations it kind of got fucked up and mutated they will encourage you to hate your family to hate your blood to hate your dna whatever to even hate humanity at times if that's what's gonna uh, start you on the process and then whatever like gift or ability or inheritance spiritual inheritance that your ancestors once had kind of trickles down to you um whatever has gotten fucked up in your bloodline throughout the generations they they want you to see the state of your bloodline now how fucked up things have gotten they want you to hate your fucked up family members they want They want that so that you can inherit certain gifts from them due to how hate magnetizes it to you. And I've just gotten out of this. Fuck. This, it feels like these past few years have been the worst of my entire life, honestly. I fucking hated my family. And in turn, I got all this, um all these like abilities all this artistic talent like revamped itself um i also experienced i realized i had to like stop hating my family and start transmuting all this into love and acceptance and like forgiveness because not only did i inherit all the generational knowledge and abilities and stuff that ancestors hundreds of years ago were into I was even in contact with like my Native American ancestor and there's like I only think there's one of them. Not only did I have to by hating my family I got access to all that. I also got access to all the generational trauma, all the generational karma. And like on the Sicilian bloodline it's scary as fuck. Uh on some sides of the bloodline where like things like pedophilia and like women abuse and uh, drug addiction and demon possession and devil worship that's all there that all had to be passed down and transmuted as well and i also um when i hate somebody in my family it's like i i start feeling their even their physical pain i can feel the way that my ancestors died in the past um you can track where your family has uh, immigrated from and migrated to throughout the United States. And I say you, I'm talking to myself. Um, I start picking up on accents from other family members who are like scattered across the country. All of that, that kind of started me on the process of turning all the hate that I had for them into love like after a certain point your subconscious initiation into like inheriting generational wisdom uh, abilities developing abilities that are passed down um i feel like this is what tribal consciousness is as well this is how they initiate young people into like tribes they want you they do like heinous things to you that are supposed to make you hate them so that they can bind the 
knowledge, the skill, the ability they're trying to give to you down to you. And then they, they, um, then they'll encourage forgiveness. Like say, sometimes I wonder if this is why people beat their children. They want you, the parents want you to hate them because it's not about the actual physical pain that you're enduring that's important. They want you to hate the pain so that they can transmit some kind of like wisdom that they can't put into words or that they don't want to tell you about. And then it starts a subconscious initiation in you for the whole time that you hate them for what they've done to you. And then when the initiation is over, you have to start transmuting all of your hatred for them into forgiveness and seeing them for the flawed humans that they are or whatever whatever you have to do to con- to start the process of transmutation um so that you can forgive them so that you don't also start inheriting like all kinds of stuff about them like physical illnesses chronic illnesses that could run in your family i guess they initiate people just as far as the person is capable of transmuting um yeah that's it no it isn't also i want to talk about how i used to read philosophy a lot there's this concept of amor fati where they want they want you to love your fate they want you to love everything that ever happened to you I feel like people only like really get into this kind of stuff when they're at that point of like they're so full of hate that they have to find some kind of philosophy or way of thinking in order to transmute like massive hate that would have otherwise killed them. Um, This concept is to love your fate, to love everything that ever happened to you whether you think it's good or bad or you liked it or not. People avoid death with this kind of way of thinking, honestly. There are times people have racked up, they've gotten such a deep karmic cycle of victimization and hate and wanting to hurt, like sending out terrible shit. Uh, they're racking up, they're manifesting a situation because of the way that karma works. I made a video about karma earlier. Um, the way that karma will cycle you, I mean, it will circle you like a hawk. And the more you're in a certain like kind of energy, the heavier, the bigger, the kind of transformation or death process that you're gonna have to go through will be so people get into these kinds of things like amor fati um or loving everything loving humanity they get into loving darkness uh unconditional love unconditional forgiveness when otherwise they were about to manifest a situation that would result in premature death um you are dying every day you are Nobody sits there and thinks about how they hate that their skin cells fall off and die every day. That's why these that's why it happens so easily and naturally and constantly and no one pays attention to it and it doesn't have a big impact on you. People are very scared of their own entire physical death. They're scared of sudden death. They're scared of People hate things like demonic activity, uh, possession. They're scared of the idea of them being taken over. This is exactly why it happens. So people get into these kinds of philosophies where I don't know. I don't know who any if anyone who watches this is even going to realize. I hate how it's getting cold outside and I'm sitting on the edge of a cliff. So I've started talking. I forget what I'm saying and then I start, I half explain something and then I like, honestly, the way that I'm talking right now is like, I'm in a, I'm starting to be in a karmic cycle because I hate the weather. 
And now I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm done talking.